Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing uh, movie collisions, or not movie collisions, but collision testing with movie clips, which also works with buttons, but we're going to use movie clips. So the first thing we need to do is we need to establish that we have two movie clips that are going to interact with each other. So I will draw something here, change my color. I like to have red. Oh, got a big uh, stroke. Okay, and I'll also do a blue wall here. Did not change it, so let's go to blue. Fill bucket, there we go. First thing I need to do is convert things to a symbol. And I could use buttons, but movie clips work better. Just because buttons, you can't animate them. Uh, let's call this ball. And under the registration point, if you look right here, I have a choice to say, where is my origin going to be? I'm going to select the center, and I'll explain why in a moment. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to make my wall a movie clip. Right click, convert to symbol. Doesn't really matter what this one is. I'm just going to call it wall. Okay, now for this guy, I'm going to call him ball underscore MC. Enter. And with this guy selected, I'm going to call him wall underscore MC. Okay. Let us begin. First thing we need to do is create a listener. So, what we could do is we could add it to the stage, or we could just say that it's there regardless. So let's begin. We should have add event listener. I'm just pulling out my nifty notes. Sorry about that. Bracket event dot enter underscore frame comma and I'll call this hit test. That's going to be my function name. Close bracket. Now another way of doing this, because there's only one frame, it's going to add the event listener to the frame itself. Another way of writing this is to say stage dot add event listener. Will this work if I do this? Ah, double clicked. Awesome. Event dot enter frame. Bracket. Now both of these lines will do exactly the same thing. Now for the sake of having no errors in my code, I'm gonna have to comment out one of them. Otherwise, I'll get an error with a duplication. Uh, tag to it. Okay, so now I need to define my function. Function hit test bracket. Uh, let's say EBT for event bracket. Open curly brace, close curly brace. Okay, so now anytime the frame is ran in its test mode in its uh, exported Swift format, the following is going to happen. Well, we could say our ball underscore mc dot x, so it's x position, is going to equal mouse x. That'll make sure that the x coordinate is attached to my mouse. So I'll move left to right. And I just have to make sure that it goes dot y for the mouse to follow in the mouse coordinate or in the y coordinate. And if I command return, test my movie. Okay, it works. Now, do you remember earlier when I was checking my registration point? Take note where my mouse is. If I set my, my point to the top left corner, 
I would actually be floating on the white space and still control the ball. This way, it's a little easier. Okay, so I'll exit out of here. Now that I know that this works, go back into my code. Now it's time to add an if statement to control my collision. Notice I am within the brackets of my function. I'm going to have an if statement here. So if, I'm going to check the boundary box outline. So if my ball underscore mc dot hit test capital T object open another bracket for my secondary movie clip which is wall underscore MC close my wall underscore MC bracket and now I have to close the bracket for my if statement open curly brace close curly brace so now I have a function and I have an if statement within my function. Notice how it tabs over each time. I'm going to say a trace statement. You hit me. Now let's try that out. Zoom out. Command return. Okay, so I'm controlling, I'm controlling. And as soon as I touch, oh. You hit me, you hit me. Awesome. Okay. Now what I want to do is now that I know that that works, I want to create a dynamic text box for my score. So I'll make a box up here. Dynamic is already in there, awesome. I'll call this score. I will embed my font. That way I don't get additional errors. And it's called score. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my actions. And anywhere outside of my function, I'm going to declare a variable. Well, I love how it jumps around like that. To do so, all you do is type var and whatever you want. I like to use counter, and I'm going to equal it to zero. Now the reason I'm creating a variable, I'm making a container that I can use to count. By having this container count, it saves my dynamic text box from needing additional math code. Okay, I don't even know if it's possible, but here we go. Var count equals zero. So now, if I say display my counter in my function, anywhere in my big brackets, I could say um, score, dot txt equals counter and I set my counter up here to zero so I know that worked let me test it out command return and there we have a zero and I can hit and it stays at zero so far so good now what we need to do is establish when do I need to add more to that zero. Well, I'm going to add more every time it gets hit. So I'm going to find where can I prove that it gets hit? Ah, my trace statement down here. So instead of a trace statement, what I will do is, since I know my trace statement works, I'll comment that out. And I'll say every time it gets hit, instead of tracing you hit me, I will tell my counter plus equals, let's say, 10 points. So I'm going to say, bring my counter up by 10. I'll zoom out. Put my cursor up here so it's beside. Oh, up here. The zero, I hit once, twice, three times, six. If I hold it, my score goes up. Awesome. That works. Okay, and that is today's tutorial. As you have learned in um, previous tutorials, if you wanted to, you could always adjust your different uh, text boxes by saying score colon with quotation marks. You could change your counter to equal five, one. You could even make multiple objects collide and have other bad objects subtract. 
All right. Hopefully you've uh, learned something and uh, we'll see you next time.